Hello, everybody. My name is David Carter. I'm the Director of Education and Outreach for Charleston Jazz. And we're here today with someone near and dear to me, Mr. Stephen Tenney. Hello, Stephen. Thanks for being here with us today. Yeah, anytime, man. So Stephen has a lot of great information to share with us. And he's currently teaching some of our summer classes right now. And people are really, really, really enjoying it. I know I am. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in. And uh, Stefan, tell us a little bit about yourself. And where'd you go to school, your musical journey? How'd you get to where you are now? Um, so I um, was actually born in West Virginia. Um, uh, both my parents were, um, you know, middle school, high school, elementary school uh, music teachers. Um, and uh, from a very sort of a young age, I, there was always music involved in, you know, some way, shape or form. Um, my mom was a, as a classical, um, like orchestral pianist and did a lot of stuff. My, uh, dad was a, you know, plays a lot of, you know, trumpet, whether it's, you know, classical or jazz, stuff, but they're both great music educators. Um, I, you know, I was maybe like nine or 10 and had a bunch of older siblings and, um, they'd all picked instruments and I was like, oh, I got to pick something cool that no one else has picked. And I was like, man, there's so many already taken. Like I didn't understand what I was doing. Um, and I picked trombone and I've been doing that for 14 years, um, ish, give or take a few months. Um, but yeah, I moved, I moved to Charleston pretty early on. Um, I was maybe 11 at the time, maybe 12, something like that. Um, and that's really when I started, you know, playing music and getting into that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I moved around Berkeley County a little bit and then sort of settled at um, School of the Arts um, for Charleston County and met a, a, my first trombone teacher there, um, took with him for a while. Um, yeah, that's sort of at least the, the early progression. Um, then I went to Berkeley and just graduated. Um, for you know with a degree in performance congratulations and, yeah graduating is it's something to do <laughs> yeah. um and now i'm i uh hopefully you know fingers crossed as of fall will be um in new york going to manhattan school of music for um masters in jazz arts which is like jazz history jazz education jazz arranging composing mix of just everything sort of compiled together that's awesome man what what are some things that you're looking forward to doing after you, you know, work on your masters or you while you're doing your masters, you know, what's next? Are you trying to do an album? Are you just trying to practice? Are you shedding? What what's some things upcoming for you? Um, being a podiatrist sounds really fun. Um, I'm figuring after all the music education, I'm just gonna be done and and <laughs> just do something else. <laughs> um, no, uh, you know, I I have thought for a very long time it would be very cool to like live and work in New York um and I you know I know a lot of guys there and have kind of gone there and you know started to put the feelers out in terms of like getting to work there but um just being uh not only a jazz trombonist but just a well-rounded trombonist sort of hitting all the marks um doing that teaching you know whether it's at the college level or just like private lessons um sort of doing a, a combination of that would be fantastic. I do, I do have to say that I keep making the joke. Um, I live in a house that's all musicians. Um, so they're always like, oh man, what are you going to do? Like, when are you going to come up with an album? Or like, where are you going to teach? And I'm like, you know, I'm really thinking about becoming like a 65 year old man and opening like just like a breakfast place and just serving people waffles, but like have them be like real bad but like be the only <laughs> breakfast place around. So like they yeah. kind of have to deal with it. There we go. Yeah. But, but, you know, but yeah, just honestly, just hitting, you know, doing a lot of studio work, you know, writing music, um, doing as much as physically possible to stimulate my brain would be ideal. Uh, yeah. Oh, I think that's great. That's great. Well, speaking of stimulating the brain, what's some advice you would give to an up and coming musician whether they're in middle school high school an adult just any advice um at least the advice i was given that i still take to heart and use every day is just listen to as much as you can i mean i'm a trombonist i wasn't 
you know, necessarily like classically trained. Like I didn't do the whole classical repertoire, big trombone kind of thing. Um, that being said, though, I still almost daily to every other day listen to classical music of some kind. And I listen to jazz music and I listen to like hip hop. Hip Hop Butterfly is an amazing, you know, amazing thing to listen to. The more input you have, the more you have the ability to have, you know, vaster, you know, output. It can be more complex, it can be more interesting. But the key to at least in terms of being a musician and growing and developing new things is just listening to as much as physically possible. I mean the the technical aspects are great, like learning all the theory and learning all the harmonic ideas and concepts. They're they're all you know valid and really important. But if you don't know what those things sound like, it doesn't matter whether you know how to write them out. If you don't know what they sound like, it doesn't quite make a difference. So listening as much as possible uh, is sort of the the number one thing in my book uh, for anyone, whether they're starting to learn it. 10 or starting to learn at 50 you know it's, it's the biggest thing i i think you're exactly right uh a lot of the other teachers and other folks who have uh been through this series a lot of them have said the same thing i wonder students who are watching this now if that's something you should consider we're, we're all, just, just all listen we're all, <laughs> you're all making this up this so. is all this is all a grand scheme we're making a, a multi-level marketing thing don't worry exactly just listen yeah. to us <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I, who are some of your biggest influences right now? And they don't necessarily have to be trombone related. Yeah, they're, most of them aren't, to be honest. Um, you know, I, early on, I listened to a lot of trombone players. Um, but now, you know, it can be all over the place. Like in the past week, it's been um, re-digging up Roy Hargrove because um, that's always a good thing to do. Um, make yourself feel bad about the way you play. <laughs> Um, you know, Roy Hargrove, a little bit of Joshua Redman a couple days ago. Um, and for, for like sort of a different thing that isn't necessarily as much like composer type thing, like people who like create their own music. Um, but the WDR jazz orchestra in Germany, um, they're just all monsters. They're amazing. Um, so just listening to them play anything. I mean, they bring guest artists in all the time. To oh, yeah. But they're just amazing. Listening to to guys who are just destroying everything that they play is, is it's amazing to watch. Amazing to see. It's it's, it's good. It's good stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm a big WDR, big band fan. Uh, I'm trying to sneak one, of their, sneak one of their jobs if a chair opens up. Yeah. Me, I, 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 Hopefully they're watching this video right now and they'll. <laughs> no, but thank you for sharing. That.